The nightmares got worse every day, and they always focused around the same image, a white wolf. Large and unnatural, like something out of a story, or more appropriately, a legend. Her parents wouldn't listen, <laughs> and why would they? Her father was a pastor, and her mother, well, let's just say her mother feared her husband far more than any nightmare. So that one night, I might be left her alone to go meet up with some friends. The girl awoke in the middle of the night, drenched in a cold sweat. It was a nightmare again. When she calmed, she took a deep breath, realizing she was safe in her bed. But that's when she heard it. The scratch. The scratch. The scratch. The scratch. The scratch. But this is no dream. This is real, and it was right outside our door. Sorry. <laughs> Please continue. Thank you. At first, she didn't believe her own ears. But then came the unmistakable sound of a low growl. The scratching grew louder, more violent. She sprang from her bed ran out her window. She heard the crashing of her door behind her, but she didn't dare look back. She could hear the heavy panting of the beast getting closer. 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 She climbed down the drain pipe on the side of the house, but then she slipped. She fell into the ground. Smack! She got up and she listened, but all at once it was gone. Had she imagined it, it didn't matter. In the distance, she could see her parents' headlights. Fearing that her father would be upset to see her outside in her nightdress, she turned the corner, go back to the house. Rah! The wolf's razor sharp teeth were inches from her face. Its foul, warm breath washed over her. Her screams were short and then cut silent. Later that night, her parents returned home. Their headlights cutting through the darkness, illuminating her mutilated dead body on the driveway. They were never the same after that night, and they learned a valuable lesson. Believe in everything. Bravo, bravo. Thank you, sir. But. You towed it wrong. Seriously? No, I didn't. Yeah. See, her parents scare away the white wolf. That's how the legend goes. They come home, see it, and they learn that the nightmares are real. No one dies. No one dies. Where's the fun in that? Besides, it happened in my hometown. I know my folklore. It was just a close call. Either way, it's a great story gets me every time. Only because you screamed in our fucking faces. <laughs> well, that's how you do it. Well, have you got any others? Uh, I got the one about the escape psychopath in the woods. Does he have a hook for a hand? Sometimes. Heard it. Really? Yeah. Last month at the lake. Damn. All right, well, forget the psychopath. I got plenty more. Oh. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> But you can think of another while we go get some more beer. All right, now you guys go ahead. I'm gonna stay behind and finish setting up camp. You sure? Yeah, go on. When you get back, I promise I'm gonna scare you so bad you're gonna be begging to stay in my tent tonight. I'll hold that to you, cowboy. Hey, but bring back real beer. None of that imported shit. And no goddamn wine coolers, Mikey. Well, 
hello there. You lost? We heard screaming, me and my friends are campsites on the other side. Uh, I'm Carol. I'm Peter. I'm sorry about the noise, I was just telling my friends of camp last story. Oh, you mean like a, a ghost story? Uh, something like that. What about you, you know any? <laughs> Not really, uh, they, they kind of freak me out. Well, that's the point. You wanna hear one? I don't know. I know one about a white wolf. True story. Oh. I think I might have heard that before. I thought you said you didn't like scary stories. I don't. But I think I know what story you're talking about. The White Wolf of Texas? That's not a campfire story. That's an urban legend. It's all the same. It all comes from someplace. That's why I always say, you believe in everything. <laughs> How progressive of you. What about the one with the psychopath in the woods? Have you heard that one? It sounds familiar. Um, I'm not sure. Did he have a hook for you? Sometimes. Yeah. I think I read it in a book once. A book? That's no way to hear a story. Yeah, let me show you. See, the way to tell a campfire story, it's not so much about the story itself. It's about the delivery. Uh, what do you mean? All you have to do is speak in a low, quiet voice. And lower your victim, I mean your audience, in to a false sense of security. And then, once they're drawn in, once they're desperate to know how it ends, you screw off the ending! <laughs> Effective. But I think you're using a cheap shirt. Can't argue with success. Now, forget the book, forget all the other versions. Let me tell you the real story of the psychopath in the woods. Many years ago, a young couple was spending the night alone in the woods. Kind of like me and you right now. Earlier in the evening, they heard a radio broadcast about a serial killer that had escaped from a local insane asylum. But they were young, invincible. They didn't care. Thought nothing could hurt them. So they went on with their plans anyways. Picked out a nice secluded spot to camp. Kind of like this one. Where me and you are right now. Later in the evening, the man went in the woods to take care of his business. He didn't come back. Ten minutes passed. Ten minutes turned to thirty. 30 turned into an hour. And still he didn't come back. The young woman's mind trailed back to that news report of the serial killer. Then she began to hear strange noises coming from the surrounding trees. At first, the girl thought it was her boyfriend who had somehow gotten turned around in the woods. So she began to call out. And although she could still hear the sounds of footsteps in the distance, she didn't respond. Wait, did you hear that? Peter, stop. No, seriously, I think I heard someone out there. This isn't cool, really, stop. Shh, shh. Hello? Someone out there? Mikey, Cassie, Mary, you guys screwing with us? I guess I'm just imagining things. Stop!
No! Fuck! Ah! Motherfucker! Ah! You killed her! Ah! Ah! The fuck is this? Hey! Hey, who are you? Kill her. Kill her. So what do you What do you mean silver? Hey! Hey, hey, what do you hey, talk to me? Hey! Hey! Right when you have them in the palm of your hands. No! 